Hey folks, Phil Gallagher back again for the last daily D&T of the week. Again, we are playing with this uh, sort of white Eldrazi D&T hybrid sort of thing. Um, and matches aren't going quite as well as I might have expected. I think we've gotten a little bit unlucky this league. The deck feels okay. Um, but, you know, it is not the best time to be playing Thalarus. Alright. This hand is great. We don't get a turn one play, but we get turn two into three into four into five, assuming I draw one land at some point. Um, that is just absolutely nutty. Do, do something. I need something to talk about. Please. My hand, my hand kind of plays itself over here. Alright. We might be playing against Elvish Reclaimer Elves. In which case, it's probably better to play Thought Knots here into Reality Smasher or Thought Knots here into Thought Knots here. Rather than try to play Thalia turn 2. Um, if this isn't Elvish Reclaimer Elves and it's just some sort of depth deck, I can always change my mind. But uh, Thalia historically does not do a lot against Elves. My opponent may just be wastelanding me now. Nope, we're going for a stage. So that did use a Simeon Spirit Guide in case you're uh, curious about what was going on over there. So we are going to be playing against a Depth Shell of some nature. We don't have total information yet to let us know, like, on what side of the spectrum this depth stack is going to be on. Um, but Spirit Guide is making me think we're going to be closer to the turbo side than not. <clears throat> so my opponent will just name Wasteland in the dark here. Oh. Wow, that surprises me. That may be an indication that my opponent has both Spirit Guide and Crop Rotation. <coughs> <coughs> so my opponent has the entirety of the combo. They might not be able to make it next turn. So the question is, do I take crop rotation and stop any sort of maze of ish, glacial chasm sort of things, or do I take reality or do I take thoughtsies so they can't take my second reality smasher? So I can attack for 9 followed by 14, which is enough. Um, so the thing is, if I leave them with crop rotation and they have ancient tomb, they crop rotation for ancient tomb and I die, so I guess I have to take this. We'll turn him sideways. Right, my 
opponent has chosen to chump block, leaving them at 15, meaning I'm not presenting lethal, but they need to top deck a land. Holy crap. Okay, okay. So I can deal 14. I'm dead if they have Elvish Spirit Guide. Where am I? So I use three mana for Eldrazi Displacer and then I can also hold up its activation due to Eldrazi Temple. Um, so I am not actually dead. I have probably won. That's a big difference. <coughs> All right, cool. Um, that got mighty scary. So I have now shown my opponent that I am white Eldrazi. So I probably want Swords of Plowshares. I probably want Sorcerer's Spyglass. I probably want Thorn on the play, but not on the draw. And Cast Out is another instant answer to Merit Lodge. It's expensive, but if the game goes long, this is probably fine. Um, as I've been doing every round, I'll probably board out Containment Priest as my starting point, and then board out Walking Ballista. If my opponent shows me Bobs, I'll probably bring those back in, but until I see that, I don't really want it. I can consider Thorns over the other two copies of this, just to have another early disruptive play. So I have 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17 early disruptive plays, if I count 3 mana as being acceptable. I think this is probably okay. I think my opponent has to get me relatively quickly. Otherwise things get pretty awkward for them. If I'm just able to cast my spells, I have so many things that actually interact with them. That it will make their life difficult. So this Thought Seize probably takes my Chalice of the Void, which was going to be my turn one play. If I spike a land, I get a turn one Thalia. Um, that's still pretty good. We're going to cast that, discard that, play this, <coughs> and then play the Chalice. Hopefully that's actually disruptive to my opponent in the medium term. In the long term, they can just like Vampire Hex Mage remove it, and it's whatever. Uh, another thing that's awkward is that in order to play the Chalice turn one, I have to expose myself pretty hard to Force of Vigor. Like, Force of Vigor taking both of these is real rough right now. So this isn't a true soul land, so I can't use it to cast Thalia, and I'm one mana short of Thought Not Seer. Um, so I unfortunately have to pass the turn. <coughs> <clears throat> and now I'm in a very bad position. So I know they have the stage, and I can't stop that. I can make the stage enter tapped, though. I guess is what I will be doing.
So this buys me a little bit of time. But my opponent pausing like this makes me think they have decay. No, nope, no decay. Um, so this exact line that happened was a good reason why my opponent should have played the Thespian stage first. It doesn't matter if the Dark Depths is tapped. Um, so we got a little bit of a freebie there in that regard. Um, now I need to play Thought Not Seer rather than Thalia. Because I will have one more out in Cast Out if I play Thought Not Seer versus Thalia. Uh, actually, don't need to tap like that. This is two, three, and then this can just be black. Um, so I will take the knot of this world, make it look like I have outs to what my opponent has going on. and play towards cast out. Notably, I have shut off my swords to plowshares. Assuming that my opponent knows how their combo works, I am dead because I can't Swords of Plow shares the Dark Depths. Ah, Merit Large too strong. <coughs> All right, I think we're going to run back the same plan, but consider Thorn when I'm on the play as well. Again, walking ballista is not exactly where I want to be. Opponent appears to be doing some sideboard adjustment, um, but I am not. Yes, I would like to play first. Nope. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure that this hand is good enough. Like, this hand has, like, Thalia or Chalice or Thalia and Chalice. <clears throat> but the entire top end of my curve is not going to be castable. And I don't get a turn one play. I don't know that this hand has enough pressure. I think I'm going to mulligan this one. Alright, we're playing a very different sort of game this time around. So this is going back, and this is going back. We are playing Operation Don't Die. I have no clock, no pressure, no disruption, but I do have kind of two and a half different answers to Marriott Lodge. So that's cool. I expect Sorcerer Spyglass to go back since it's different. No.
All right. Um, so I will name the vampire hex mage and make them assemble the combo the long way. Does this actually record these? Are these here now? These are here now. Well, actually, I guess the other thing I could do is just name the ghost quarter and make it so they can't answer my Caracas. That's actually pretty interesting. <coughs> Let's do that. I don't know if they play a... Wasteland in addition to their Ghost Quarter. Like, that varies from list to list. Also, I have this terrible memory that I have a single planes. Yeah. So shutting off Ghost Quarter is actually way better than it appears on the surface. Opponent's in kind of a weird spot. Like, they have access to green mana through Elder Spirit Guide crop rotation. I don't know how aggressively they can be crop rotating stuff away at this point. I don't think I'm supposed to play this when I have shown this. So, like, I have this source of plowshares that is potentially going to be an important part of my game. So I don't think I can shut that off, even though it's going to shut off more of my opponent's cards than my cards. Like, if I get to rest and lose this source of plowshares, it's a totally different ballgame. But at this current time, I just don't think it's correct to shut off one of my three cards using one of my other cards. Like, I would love for my opponent to play out a Vampire Hex Mage. I get a Swords of Plowshare, it force their hand. and then play the Chalice. So that'll be Sylvan Scrying. Probably some green source. Herborg does things as well. Thalia versus Chalice is interesting here, because I know my opponent has Spirit Guide Crop Rotation. So if I has the Chalice, they will they can crop rotate in response. But this kind of like drops my guard. I probably do need to get a clock into play. So I will go ahead and do this. <coughs> But life is definitely slightly awkward. 
Like, once Astalia is in play, I might be able to realistically spend seven turns holding both of these up. What's going on, opponent? Another Hex Mage. No. Yes. Okay, so my opponent can make the Merit Lodge at any time. I probably need to do a quick reread of Not of This World. <clears throat> need to add MTG of that because there's too many results. All right, spell or ability. <coughs> So I probably need to be holding up both Wasteland and Caracas from this point forth. Let's try to force some action here. This may also kill the Vampire Hex Mage directly, well, indirectly at some point. My opponent may need to unleash some of the other cards. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do if my opponent responds with crop rotation. So what if this is a wasteland? If this is a wasteland and I let this resolve, how does that fight play out? Like, do I need to just wasteland the depths now and force them to find another depths? This is a really weird spot. So if they get wasteland and we go to the end step, they try to make something. I waste in response. They waste my Caracas. I win. I try to take the first action, I waste their thing, they sacrifice in response, they waste on me, no. So whatever it is, the sensor's tapped. I wasn't taking that into account. So because this enter's tapped, I think I can let that go. So if this is a wasteland that enters tapped, I can wasteland their wasteland. Another Dark Depths. Alright. Well, I thought the end of that game was going to be much more interesting than it was, um, but here we are. Um, we went 2-3 this week, but I think some things went miraculously wrong for us to 2-3. Like, we lost that game to Burn, where we started out with turn 1, Thorn and Thalia, because my opponent was playing Simeon Spirit Guide. Um, and I think in any other normal game, like, we win that one. And there were a couple other things where, like, we got, we got stuck on some mana or some things didn't break our way. Um, so I feel like the deck list was fine, but we are on the wrong side of variants. <coughs> 
Um, I do feel, though, that the, like these Containment Priests just should not be in the deck. Like, I know that they're a combo with Eldrazi Displacer, but Displacer often wrecks the mid rangey matchups anyway, even without Containment Priest. So I'd kind of just want some other Disruptive Elements or something in here, or other removal. Um, you know, if we treat all of these as our true do two drops, like, I wouldn't mind just having some other two-drop piece of interaction, um, be it, you know, Warping Whale, Main Deck Thorns, or, or something of that nature. Uh, and if you Main Deck the Thorns, you could open up another couple of sideboard slots. I've also seen people playing Once Upon a Time in some of these slots. So you take out, like, something, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but something like two Contain Priests, two Walking Ballistas, play four Once Upon a Time, have a greater chance of, of curving out and smooth out some of your awkward draws. Um, that's something that you can do as well. Um, I definitely think that the shell has promise. Um, I don't know whether the black sideboard plan is better or worse than the mono-white version of this deck. The mana is already kind of rough within white Eldrazi, so making it worse maybe isn't ideal. Um, but food for thought for the future if you're looking to play something like this. One way or another, I will be back to playing normal D&D for this next week. Um, I hope you have enjoyed anyway. Um, I just didn't want to record, you know, something with some suboptimal D&D list right before we potentially get a banning. You know, if there's a banning, great. I'll play something for the new mana game. If there isn't a banning, great. Question mark. Um, and I'll just go back trying to do it with, honest to goodness, Death and Taxes with three or four copies of Deafening Silence. All right, I hope you enjoyed this week. Cheers, folks.